These are other people that were involved in the accident. So Team Bus claims four lives. Uh, Randy Gregory has been suspended for violating the league's substance abuse policy. First it was four games. Now we're here in ten games. Rolando McLean out for ten games, violating the league's substance abuse policy. Demarcus Lawrence out four games, violating the league's substance abuse policy. Greg Hardy's gone, so that's what that would be four, four guys from your front seven from last year gone, for the, at least the first four games of this season, if not ten to sixteen games, in Hardy's case. You got McFadden breaking his elbow under mysterious circumstances kind of like brian greasy tripping over his dog all those years ago or whatever he did um you got this thing now with ezekiel elliott and the domestic violence and we'll have to see how that plays out because he could be serving a suspension and everybody including myself was very intrigued to see how he was going to run behind that offensive line because you get a top running back behind that offensive line who can run in that system with Romo healthy and Dez healthy, all of a sudden Terrence Williams is going to look good again. You still got Jason Witten patrolling the middle and up the seams. That offense would have been very good, but now it's a wait and see situation. The defense is skeptic at this point. You can't lose that much talent and just fill it in. And they weren't that good of a defense. I mean, they had some good games. They had some spurts last season over the last couple of seasons. But they're not a top defense. They're just not. So I don't know what the Cowboys are going to do, but they're going to have this year is going to have to be Jason Garrett's probably his best year of coaching if he wants to continue to be the Cowboys head coach. Jerry Jones can't just keep letting this go on. His ego's too big. Here's a guy. Let's move on. We're done with the Cowboys. Let's move on to a guy. Different sport, different way of life, different way of thinking. Let's move on to the Colorado Rockies shortstop rookie, Trevor Story. Yes, Story is his last name. And yes, he is creating quite the story for himself this season. I don't know if you guys have been following the Rockies or if you've been following Trevor Story. uh, But this is the guy, the Rockies brought him up this year as a rookie. Uh, basically to take Tulowitzki's place. And nobody knew he was going to catch fire and come on this fast and play this well this early. So far through this point in the season, Trevor Story has 27 home runs. And that number is actually smaller than it should be thanks to the new plexiglass that the Rockies put up in the outfield because he's hit three or four off the plexiglass. Okay? Okay. The rookie record for home runs in a season for a shortstop, or maybe just in general for any player, is 30 home runs for Nomar Garcia-Para. Garcia Para. Remember him up in Boston before he went to Oakland and, you know, whatever, all the places he tried to catch on. And he's at 27 with 64 games left in the season. So he's going to have that record. That means he's setting Rocky records. He's setting Major League Baseball records. We all remember earlier in the season. He had the most home runs to start off his career in the first eight or nine games. And again, that number would have been higher had he not hit a couple off of the plexiglass then. He's near the league lead in home runs. He's playing great defense. If I if I remember correctly, I don't have it sitting here in front of me. He's batting just a shade under 300. So he's having a great rookie year. Not getting a lot of press because the Rockies record doesn't reflect his talent, which has happened a lot here in Colorado. Troy Tulewitzki, Cargo, Arenado. I mean, you can go back to the Blake Street Bombers. They were a little more exciting because there was four or five of them. One year we had uh, the Blake Street Bombers hit, what, four of them hit 40 home runs in a season. Um, So that caught national attention. But the Rockies have this history of having these young, great hitters and power players and batters that, you know, doesn't reflect their talent in the overall record. Arenado this season is being overlooked, really, as a third baseman and as a hitter. I'm very impressed with this kid. I'm going to enjoy watching his career for years to come. Hopefully he can avoid the injury bug that 
hampered the Rockies' last shortstop in Troy Tulowitzki. Because this kid really has the makings to be a good one, I think. Uh, huh. We talked about this guy the other day, King Griffey Jr., inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. I didn't see the suit before we, I talked to you guys the other day, but did you? this is the best suit anybody has ever worn to a draft, a Hall of Fame speech, uh, an induction ceremony, or anything to do with athletics, okay? If you get a chance, go out there, Google, Yahoo, Bing, whatever search you use, search his suit, a close-up picture. Go on ESPN.com or check Bleacher Report. Check these sites. The pictures are out there. Um, he's got a pinstripe suit on, but the pinstripes say "Class Hall of Fame Class 2016. That's what the white pinstripe says on across the entire suit, everywhere, on the pants, on the jacket, right? Then check out the tie. The tie, his gold tie, has him on it. Okay, it's a baseball themed tie with him and his swing and his hat backwards and all that stuff on the tie. Wouldn't notice it if you're standing far away, but when you look up close, you see the fine details. And that that to me is just that was that was good thinking on his part. He definitely planned ahead, one of a kind type stuff. Nobody else is gonna have something like that. And anybody else who does it from this point forward. They're going to know where it came from, uh, whether they change the wording in the pinstripe or put a different picture in their tie. Uh, that's that's just cool. One of a kind, just like Griffey was. All right, we're going to we're going to go to break again. When we come back, we're going to do a new segment that we're going to start doing every Wednesday. It's going to be called the good, the bad and the ugly. Hey, guys, the NFL season is almost here. And you know what that means? Fantasy football is right around the corner. Did you win your fantasy league last year? Would you like to win some extra money playing in a daily fantasy football this season? If so, the DirtCannon.com is here to help. You can get numbers and projections anywhere. But if you want to build a winner for a full season fantasy team or are just looking to win consistently in, a, in daily games, then do what I did and join the DirtCannon.com. They have it all in one place, fellas. Whether a bronze member or a silver, they will hook you up. I recommend the silver package. Starting today for the silver package, use my code RDST and you will get a customized 2016 NFL Draft Kit, Draft Day Intelligence, and access to their award-winning lineup analyzer with expert insight and analysis. So win your league, make some money, and take home the bragging rights with the DirtCannon.com. And use Real Deal Sports Talks promo code RDST. And for the first month with my code RDST, get four ninety nine off the first month of your silver membership. All right. So starting starting today and every Wednesday here to follow throughout the NFL season, uh, we're going to get it started now. We're going to go ahead and do it throughout the whole season. We're going to do a segment called The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. In this segment, we're going to take three sports topics, three headlines that have been happening throughout the week, the sports day, what have you, and uh, we're going to break them down as the good, the bad, and the ugly, as the segment may mentions. So let's just go ahead and get started with the good. The good. This story I liked. I thought it was funny. Uh, Steph Curry out there at the golf tournament. We all remember him from the finals having his little tantrum and throwing his mouthpiece and hitting the fan with it, right? Looked funny, caught some people off guard. Oh, no, Steph Curry, he's so nice. Why would he do that? Well, he's an athlete, one. He was in a high-stress situation. He wasn't playing good. The calls weren't going the way his team needed them to. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why an athlete might break at you know that stressing point and do something that they're not thinking about. Well, comes for a circle. He's out at the Celebrity Golf Tournament. And uh, I don't know if you guys saw this report, but he's there at the tee box and he throws a mouthpiece that he has after his shot, uh, making light of the situation, uh, bringing it back up, you know, being a joke out of it. So good for Steph Curry there. Uh, nice to see him being able to have fun at uh, kind of his own expense. Now, the bad. <laughs> The bad for me, I don't like this at all. I don't know. I don't, you know, to each his own. The company can run the stuff the way they want. There have been some issues recently. Um, 
But ESPN is going to be losing two greats, apparently, this season. Um, Tom Jackson and Chris Berman. Chris Berman's contract's not going to be renewed. Uh, he had a little incident there at ESPN. I don't know if you guys remember about um, the allegations of some sexual misconduct uh, there against Mr. Berman. So his contract's not going to be renewed, and he's been with ESPN since the beginning. I think he started there in 1979 or 1980 when they were very small. And, uh, you know, his calling of the home run derby, the NFL draft, um, the NFL Sunday, things like that, he's going to be missed. They're going to have to really do their due diligence over the next few months to figure out who they're going to replace him with. Um, side note, Chris Mortensen, I hope you're doing good, bud, uh, as you recover and fight your battle. Uh, Tom Jackson, uh, reports are he's most likely going to be walking away. Uh, he's, you know, he's been there 28, almost 30 years now doing NFL work for ESPN, uh, former Denver Bronco. So, you know. I hate to see him go. Those are two guys I I basically grew up watching do sports, and they definitely influence the way I think about sports um, and the way I enjoy watching sports. So to them, I say in your next part of your life, your next adventure, have a very good time. Enjoy yourself and relax. TSPN, please, please find somebody worthy enough of filling their shoes. And the ugly... Uh. The Ugly. Oh, this is too bad. I don't like seeing this. This could be the end of this guy's career. Junior Gillette, Washington Redskins defensive lineman. Uh, tore another Achilles tendon and will miss this season as well. Um, it's really too bad when you tear one Achilles. It's even worse when you tear both of your Achilles or your Achilles twice. You don't come back with the same skills, the same bounce. Uh, it's one of those things you never fully become 100% from. Even with modern medicine the way it is, uh, if he comes back, he's lucky to be 75 80% of the player he was. Uh, so bad thing there for Junior Gallette. Bad thing there for the Redskins. Hopefully they don't follow through on the reports that we're hearing. Uh, this is one of the parts that makes this the ugly is that they're considering or there's internal conversations that the Washington team is considering using Greg Hardy as a fill-in for this year. I hope they don't. I think the guy really needs to take some time to self-reflect and not be paid millions until he really figures himself out a little bit. So that's the new segment. That's the good, the bad, and the ugly. We'll hit some headlines every Wednesday with this segment. All right, moving on. Y'all know what time it is. This is the number one Wednesday segment we do every week. Let's get real. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take some time this week to be real about something, and it's not something that I'm angry about. It's not something that I'm upset about. It's not something that I think needs to go away from sports. This is something that I'm excited about. This is time. I'm going to take some time just to rep my team a little bit, rep the Detroit Lions, one pride. Um... Anquan Bolden. We signed Anquan Bolden on. We got him for one year, tw uh, one year contract. Uh, I'm not really sure what the the compensation is, but we got him on a one year deal. He's 36 years old, and you know that doesn't mean he makes the squad. He's joining a receiver group with Marvin Jones, who we picked up as a free agent. Golden Tate, Andre Roberts, we picked up as a free agent. T.J. Jones, Corey Fuller, who we put on the pup list this week. Um, Andre Caldwell, who came over from the Super Bowl winning Denver Broncos. We got Jeremy Curley, who we signed as a free agent. Devin Thomas, who's kind of bounced around the league since he left Michigan State. And then there's the rookies and the free agents. And really the top one out of there looks like Jay Lee because of his speed coming out of Baylor. So he's joining this group. Now, if he makes the team... Because, mind you, this is a one-year deal, and it's not worth a whole lot of money. I think, honestly, I think I remember seeing something that was around two, two and a half million dollars, something like that. So they could release him. With the way Bob Quinn has worded his contracts and set them up so far, it's not a guarantee that he makes the team. 
But this is a guy you want on your team.